My oh my, I just did a five hour podcast with Jebro, Rook, and Rava. I feel like my brain is eating itself. But I realized it's three days until End of Dragons and I have not made a video. So this is an update. I'm coming here live to just catch you all up on what my plans are for End of Dragons. And maybe we can chat a little bit about the things that we have seen from some partners who got to play End of Dragons just a little early. Right off the bat, I must say congratulations to the partners for getting to have a little bit of early access and also for providing us with the footage and the information and your overall reaction to the content that you played. There was a guild hall capture event, there was an event chain in Echo Valve Wilds, and there was also some unraveling and a reveal of the entire Guild Wars 2 map as we will now know it in End of Dragons. It looks huge, it looks very detailed, and a lot of things that we have seen for quite some time have changed. Now I'm not gonna really show a lot of it, but I wanna at least talk about it. First and foremost, the standouts for me is the Isles of Janthir have slightly changed. They're no longer just the tip or the, the peninsula of Isles of Janthir. We actually see a whole entire island of Isle of Janthir. Alongside with that, towards the west, they've expanded the map to show the western heart of Maguma and the coastline along Dragon Stand up more northwest. And it continues on the way down with scatters of islands. And I believe we also see the Battle Isles. These might be the Battle Isles. They might not be. But, and then we, of course, get to the very bottom and there is Cantha. Cantha, it looks, it looks so good. The green from the Dragon Jade looks really vibrant. It has a nice little pop to the map. We of course see Xingjie Island, New Kaining City, maybe areas of Echobod Wilds and the Jade Sea. Now I won't be doing too much map dissection, but it is nice to see and actually get a little bit of a taste of what we will be able to experience. And I wonder what the waypoint costs will be if you're going from say Cantha all the way up to Holbrek or further north. I wonder how expensive this might get. And I wouldn't really mind if it was still relatively logical to the increasing cost. I think traveling that far should require some silver. And then maybe there are other methods if you really are short on silver. You can take a ship, which might take a bit longer. As for the other content that we saw, the mission in Echo Valley Wilds was the same that was shown to us through the blog posts, through text. But now we actually have some video footage of it, and I really enjoyed watching it. Everything that has been circulating around these pieces of media say that this event isn't as difficult as maybe a raid boss, but it's definitely not as easy as, say, some of the Path of Fire situations or maybe other strike mission boss fights. It seems to be kind of a nice middle ground where it still requires you to be present in the fight and kind of pick up on the mechanics as you go without being a complete pain in the butt and impossible to conquer. So that is really nice to see in my book. And of course, this is not the meta event and it looked fairly cinematic and well constructed. So that leads me to feel that the meta events might be even more cinematic and even more interesting and grand. And I cannot wait to see those. As for the guild hall, the guild hall looks really nice. The acquisition process from the footage that I saw and once again, what people have been saying about it, looks really good. It looks really engaging. There are multiple bosses that you have to go through. Rook had mentioned that it's more quest-like instead of just going from dynamic event to dynamic event, fighting wave after wave. There seems to be somewhat more of a structure through the acquisition of the End of Dragons guild hall, which is also nice to see. And that's kind of the roundup of my overall impressions. I enjoyed everything that we saw. What can I say? We're going to be able to play it here in about three days or two days or one day, or it's already out depending on when you watch this video. <laughs> Other than that, I wanted to catch you all up and get you up to speed as to what my plans are for End of Dragons. So for here on this channel, I'm going to be doing a let's play through it. I might not do an extreme walkthrough where I show you every minute to minute aspect of it. I might do a bridged series where I take each chapter or each act and I kind of 
edit it down to be a little bit more consumable where you get the major plot points, you get my major reactions and theories, and it might be a little bit more digestible that way. Alongside that, I will be interested in covering some of the strike missions to maybe provide some judgment on those strike missions and also the meta events as well. There's going to be a lot more theory crafting with builds come End of Dragons, further balance patching, things that might have been updated since beta 4 and now that we actually have the end of dragons elite specs coming to the game permanently we're gonna have some more time to figure out some fun and cool builds so that's also coming to the channel along with videos i am also doing a bunch of twitch stuff i actually stream over on twitch consistently tuesdays wednesdays thursdays and fridays i'm usually asked to be on the lightbringers cast which is spearheaded by jebro and oftentimes we have the lovely rook and boots and we have a bunch of guests like Rava and Loranity and the Crichton Herald, Fornax, and a bunch of other wonderful, wonderful individuals. So if you want to catch me live, I usually am streaming there 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I'm definitely going to be playing a lot of End of Dragons throughout the first few weeks to months to even months after that. It really just depends on how addicted I get to this expansion. Other than that, everyone, we have so few days left. I want to just quickly say that I truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you. This has been an incredible ride, an incredible journey. I have loved to get to know each and every one of you and really spend time with this community. I feel like this expansion launch, for some reason, whatever that might be, I feel a much stronger emotional connection to it than I did with, say, Path of Fire. Heart of Thorns I still feel like was really, really strong, but I'm in a different mindset. I'm a little bit more mature. I'm actually a bit more engaged in the community. And it just feels like so much love and so much excitement for this game. And I cannot wait to see where I go with Guild Wars 2 and beyond and future living worlds, future expansions, and just overall still covering games on this channel. But enough of me getting sappy, bitch. And if you would like to help support the channel, I have a Patreon where you can get early access to End of Dragons content, exclusive content, maybe even some interviews here and there. If you'd like to help support the channel in any other way, and you have not pre-ordered End of Dragons, I have links down below. Mama, the clock is ticking. The pre-order is almost up. You gotta get your goodies. Come on now. Let's do it. Thank you so much, Arunanet, for providing me with those links. I really appreciate it. And if you want to see a video of me recommending other strike missions that maybe ArenaNet could go back and reutilize, click here. And if you want to just look at another video, click over here. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone!